Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is Uncle Russ coming to live from X Cafe on Koh Samoy, beautiful country, country of Thailand. How are you doing? You good? Oh, it's been an excellent weekend. So excited. Yeah, it's funny eh? how we can have plans and how we can think we want to do stuff. And sometimes it's quick and sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But in the end, once you finish it, it's quite rewarding. Amen. Yeah. So, I got a little story for us today. Yes, I do, I do, I do. Just make sure. Oh, yeah. So, the story today is called The Tortoise and the Hare. And I'm sure many of us are very familiar with the story. Eh? Who are you backing for the race? The speedy hare or the little, oh, I don't know my daughter, very slowly. <laughs> okay, so the tortoise in the hare is one of Aesop's fables, right? And it's a story about a race between two unusual competitors where ingenuity and trickery is used to overcome the stronger opponent. Bible says you have to be wise as a serpent, but gentle as a dove. Yes. So, the story is about this hare who mocks the tortoise. Now, you know, hares are quite quick, like zip here and zip there. And then there's the old tortoise. Oh, hello, how are you today? <laughs> and so, eventually, because obviously everything slow about the to tortoise, and eventually he gets a bit cheesed off with the whole thing, and he thinks, hmm, I know what I'm going to do. We're going to settle this thing at the high corral, midday at the high corral. And he challenges the hare to a race. Now, you can imagine, eh? ever come across people like that where they taunt you and they tease you and harass you, and eventually you put your foot down, you draw a line in the sand, you say, this far and no further. We sort it out today. <laughs> and I think that's what was in the tortoise's mind. He was like, I'm done. So he decides to challenge this hare in a race. And right from the start, as so you can imagine, on your marks. And the hare's ears are up like this, and the tortoise is still. Go! And the hare's <laughs> gone. Down the road, and there's old Torty coming. Oh, it looks like slow mo. And eventually, the hare looks back and he thinks, you know, this guy's actually wasting my time. I'm getting bored. So he sat around a little bit, probably got into his cell phone, eh? Sent a couple of messages to his mate, tried to watch a bit of a movie, and then just thought, oh, you know, went to sit under the tree. And then it must have been a bit warm, so he's thinking, okay, I'll just rest my eyes for a moment. Ever did that? Huh? Uh, I'm just going to rest for a moment. Yeah. And so he ends up taking a nap. And I think the nap was a little bit longer than what he expected. And as he like startled out of his nap, out of his sleep, he looked up and there were the tortoises. And he was like running at full speed, was no speed at all, because, I mean, he's a tortoise. Well, how would you run if you were carrying your house on your back? That wouldn't be easy. <laughs> so, what happens? Wakes up, gets to the end, and the tortoise has won the race. So, What do you think the moral of the story is? Huh? 
Now, of course, none of us are like that. We don't show off about our skills and our speed and our wealth and our possessions, especially if there's somebody else who is the exact opposite of us. You know, hey, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but plus, you have no chance against me. I love watching boxing and I love some of these guys are so cocky, you know. Always got a lot to say before the fight. <laughs> and, and then like, you know, when they have the wanes and all that, and everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then when they lose the fight, they still have a lot to say. They'll blame the ref, they blame the corner. The, yeah, it's just disgusting. A little bit like that. So, don't boast about something that you're going to win until the race is over, because you don't know. Oh, well, hey, next week I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do We don't know. You see, our race can be run out in the next instant. A plane can fall out of the sky and crash on this building, and then I'm done for. My race is done. <laughs> it will be something. Can you imagine you watching live? Hi, this is Uncle Russ coming to you live from X Cafe. <laughs> Gone. Like that. And so, the thing that I learned from this, sometimes it's not about our speed, it's not about how fast we can do, it's how faithful we and consistent are we in what we do. In other words, slow and steady wins the race. Yes. So I want to read to us a little, little something. Are yeah, you okay with it? Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. Listen to this. The end of a thing is better than the beginning. The patient in the spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. Proverbs 16 verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Proverbs 21 verse 5 in the Amplified Version. The plans of the diligent surely lead to abundance and advantage, but everyone who acts in haste surely comes come surely to poverty yes matthew 13 20 to 21 so i'm reading two versions of this the first one's from the message listen to this the seed cast in gravel this is the person who hears and instantly responds with enthusiasm but there's no soil of character so when the emotions wear off and some difficulty arrives there's nothing to show for it boom you know, that's the message about the sowing of the seed, the seed that fell on stony places. Matthew in New King James says this, But he who received the seed on stony places, this is one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. And for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So it's like, out of the starting blocks, praise the Lord, here I go. Giddy, 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 giddy. And then we have so much to say about the little old lady or that other shy person, and they just steadily, faithfully, week after week, day after day, follow God's word, follow the leading of His Holy Spirit. And we're like, oh, hey, check it me, check it what I can do. And, and that person's just steady and faithful. Now, Jeremiah 17, verse five to ten a little lengthy but it's worth it thus says the lord curse is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the lord for she shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited blessed is the man who trusts in the lord whose hope is the lord for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, who spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. You see, it's not enough just to, to be a seed, to become a plant, to grow, but we need to be bearing fruit and multiplying. Yeah. 
Will we be able to say this at the end of our race called our lives? You see, the start of the race, we didn't know when that was going to happen, but God gave us the start. He knew the day we were going to be conceived and be born. But He also knows the day when our race ends. And will we be able to say the following? It's in 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 to 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but to also to all, to all who loved his appearing. Isn't that amazing? You see, it's not how we start the race. Sometimes it's not even how we run the race, but it's whether we're going to finish the race. One of my favorite things to always think about is a, a famous race that gets run in South Africa called the Comrades Marathon. And for a number of years, I don't remember how many times he won it, up and down, Bruce Fordyce. He was, yeah, he was like amazing. At the beginning of the race, there'd be thousands of people at the start and the guy will do like a rooster call and bang! And all the young bulls would be sprinting down the road and, you know, people in their outfits and making a day of the whole thing. Personally, personally, I, I didn't want to run the comrades. Yeah, it was a little far for me. It's nearly, well, nearly 100 k's, 90 odd k's, I think. I stand to correction. But get him back to Brucey. And halfway in the race, you won't see him. And the other guys, all the front contenders, one by one, you see them start fading, one by one. And there will be a couple that, that would really, you know, you could say are competitive for Bruce Fordyce with his, with his little blonde hair. And, and he'd be running, and say for example, it's the upright, up run. So he'd run from Durban to Peter Maritzburg. And he'd run into Peter Maritzburg with a the bunch of roses and present it to Evans. <laughs> He's supposed to give no sweat, no stress. He looked like he just started the race. Yeah, so you see, it's not how we start. Often it's not how we run, but it's how we finish. Are we going to finish this race well? At the end of our lives, at the end of that race, will we hear those words, Wow, done, good and faithful servant? Or have we started fast out the blocks, you know, shortcut the system, you know, don't pray, don't do this, don't do that, no, 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 you don't. You don't need to do all, you know, just, just, yeah, just uh, go through the motions. As long as you can tick the box. I went to church on Sunday and I ticked the box. I went to prayer meeting and I tick, you know, we tick all these boxes. But there's no substance, there's no root. And the warning is, if trials and tribulation and persecution come, there'll be no root in yourself. And <laughs> Did you enjoy that? The tortoise and the hare. Who are you and who am I? Are we the tortoise? Are we the hare? Are we running the, uh, running the race of faith? Now I'll read it once more. 2 Timothy, 7, 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who has loved his appearing. Run the fight, the good fight, finish the race, keep the faith. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. I really, really, really appreciate it. And uh, if you have any comments, <laughs> I'm sure you do. Please feel free. Yeah, you can say whatever you want to. Nothing offends me. I promise you.
You can say whatever you like because you have freedom of speech. And I want you to have an amazing week. Have a blessed Friday. Have an excellent, if you're going to watch sport tomorrow and Saturday, enjoy it. Spend time with the family. And remember, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. Goodbye and God bless. Until we meet again.